Hey everybody, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages. I'm back. Hope you all had a wonderful summer. Or at least not completely unbearable, the situation being what it is. Here to lessen your pain a little, I hope, it's time for a brand new weekly wordplay. What are we going to talk about today? American versus British English. Of course, in both the U.S. and the U.K., we all speak English, but divided by hundreds of miles of ocean, it stands to reason, makes sense, that these can sometimes be very different Englishes. They are distinct dialects, made up of dozens of even more regional dialects, not to mention the hundreds of other variations in other countries all over the world. I'll try to get you another day, Australia. So when we teach English as a second language, that can actually mean quite a few different things. In my class, I try to stick consistently to American English, but I know that many of my students grew up studying the British variety, and this can cause confusion. Even if that's not the case for you, it's also just a good idea to be familiar with some of the major differences. That's true for native speakers, as well as learners. There's a lot that we could talk about here, spelling, pronunciation, but today I'm going to focus on just a few words that mean completely different things depending on what side of the Atlantic you live on. Some of these distinctions are minor faux pas that can be easily cleared up. Others though are much more serious and could cause you a lot of embarrassment. Let's avoid that, shall we? We're going to start with what's on the menu. Terms for food are some of the most inconsistent words you will find while traveling from one region to the next. This is just as true in the English speaking world as in any other culture. You might see bangers and mash or pigs in a blanket on a menu and not have a clue what you've gotten yourself into. But what can be even more dangerous is when you think you're ordering one thing and the waiter comes back with something completely different. I'll give you three examples of that right now. Jelly means two different things depending on what part of the world you're in. In the United States, it refers to a thick fruit spread, mainly for bread. Without jelly, how could we make our famous peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? The Brits, on the other hand, use this to describe a gelatinous dessert. They call our jelly jam, which is a word we use in American English too. The basic difference is that jelly is made from fruit juice instead of real crushed fruit, so it has a smoother consistency. It's less likely to have seeds or other bits of fruit inside. Think creamy peanut butter instead of chunky. Other related words you may hear include preserves and marmalade. They're all delicious. In the meanwhile, we most frequently call British jelly Jello. Also delicious, but a little weird on your sandwich. Next, we have biscuits, a very general term in the UK where biscuits can be sweet or savory, similar to the Spanish use of galletas, but they're usually dry and flat. Americans tend to be a lot more specific when it comes to our flour based goods. Cookies are always sweet, while crackers are salty. Good biscuits, on the other hand, are light, fluffy, and more savory than sweet. Buttery is another good word to describe them. A lot of my students have struggled with this word over the years, both in how to pronounce it and what it means. I always tell them, if you're going to live in North Carolina, you have to know about biscuits. Southerners, in particular, are very serious about them. The closest thing to a biscuit in British English is the scone pronounced scone in the US, but scones are traditionally sweeter and a lot drier than American biscuits. The complications continue with chips. Both made from potatoes, British chips are usually cut into long, thick, rectangular strips. Unlike the round, paper-thin chips in the United States, the latter were actually invented in my hometown of Saratoga Springs, New York, so I think we should have the final word in this, but the Brits still insist on calling them crisps. We call their chips 
French fries, even though they come from Belgium, or just fries for short. When you order fish and chips, don't say I didn't warn you. One more thing I want to mention when it comes to food, a subject that has come to mean much more to all of us than ever. What do you call the food you pick up from a restaurant and bring home? In the United States, this is takeout. In the United Kingdom, they call it takeaway. Takeaway is a word in American English, too, but it's used very differently. You would most likely find it in a sentence like this. What's your takeaway from this discussion? In other words, what did you learn? Now for something a bit more serious. That last set of words can cause confusion, but this group can get you into a lot more trouble. Let's start with pants. Pants are clothes that cover up the bottom half of your body. But did you know that British pants go underneath American pants? In the United States, we would call those underwear. Maybe panties if you're a woman. The British, on the other hand, refer to that second layer of leg protection as trousers, a rather formal term in US English. For example, we would never call blue jeans trousers, just nice work pants, maybe. But the British use the same term for both. So as you can see, be a little careful. If you compliment a woman on her pants in London, she may just slap you for being so rude. Fanny packs, in British bum bags, are a big fashion no-no nowadays. But they caused a lot of tension a couple of decades ago because of an interesting difference in meaning. This is a particularly sensitive issue for me because a possible nickname for Stephanie is Fanny. It's much less common than it used to be, and I'm sure you can see why. In the United States, Fanny is another word for bum or hiney or butt, but in a playful way, like something you'd say to your kids. Get some pants on so I don't have to look at that fanny. The Brits, on the other hand, use this word to describe the female private area on the other side of the body. In other words, the vagina. Not nearly as family friendly, very rude in fact. I think we all understand therefore why you would want to avoid talking about someone's fanny out in public. A quick note on bum before I move on. This is a common kid-friendly word for one's gluteus maximus as well. In American English, more exclusively, it also refers to a homeless person, anyone who refuses to work for money. Go get a real job, you bum. As such, the verb to bum means to borrow something without any plans to pay or return it. Have you ever bummed a cigarette from a buddy? Well, just wait for our final word. Last but not least, fag. Fag is an informal but socially acceptable British slang for cigarettes, related to a less common verb uh, to become exhausted by hard work. In the US, however, it is a very insulting term for homosexuals, especially gay men. This word, short for faggot, is so strong that it's considered by many to be a curse or swear word. Regardless of your views on homosexuality, I definitely do not recommend using it. While the other terms here may cause a significant bit of embarrassment, this one is more likely to get you punched, especially if you use it to describe a sensitive heterosexual man. Of course, I've only begun to scratch the surface of American British differences, but it's a decent start. What are some other terms or phrases that you've heard that are unique to the United States or United Kingdom? Share them below in the comments, or for even more valuable practice, try writing sentences using them. I bet you missed my homework, didn't you? Thanks as always for watching. I hope you learned something new and interesting. I'm only going to be producing one video a week for the moment, but let me know what you'd like to learn more about. I'm always happy to answer questions. Check out my website, apexlanguages.com, for more videos. And until next time, have a happy, healthy rest of your day.